Hey there, YouTubers. All right, so we're going to go over this Gigabyte H610M S2H. Now, I have personally unboxed, reviewed eight LGA1700 motherboards. And even though I don't personally have this one in stock, uh, I have enough of the motherboards to tell you all about it. So uh, we're going to use the pictures that exist on here and go over it just like I would if I honestly had the product in front of me. So all starts here, folks. This is a LGA 1700. That's a 12th gen Intel. Later on, it's going to support LGA 1800, which should be 13th gen. All right. So pretty good from that aspect for upgradability. PCIe 4.0 here. What does that mean? Well, you're good with all of the existing graphics cards. One day there'll be PCIe 5.0, 6.0. You may lose some performance. Now, as you might have noticed, this is the cheapest motherboard out there that actually has an M.2. Okay, and unlike some of the other motherboards that just have the little screw, this has that little plastic gizmo where you'll put the, your M.2 SSD in here and then rotate this and lock it in place. A lot easier than using the, uh, the little screw that, uh, you know, you can have a lot of fun trying to screw that in. Uh, you definitely a magnetic screwdriver helps, but in this case, that's a, that's a big bonus. Uh, you won't see that in the H610M that I had. All right, CMOS battery right here. And obviously, for those that don't know, if you screw something in your, up in your BIOS, that is the place you're going to go to reset your BIOS, okay? Real simple. Let me uh, pause something here, folks. Sorry, we're doing a little mining. Um, so there's that guy, which you would expect. And we come over here. DDR4 RAM, only two sticks, all right? You know, for a lot of you, it doesn't matter. If you want to have 32 gigs, you know, you're going to want to buy two sticks of 16. If you wanted 64, you have to buy two gigs or two sticks of 32. If you happen to have, you know, four sticks of 8 gigs sitting around, this is probably not the motherboard for you because now you got to go buy... Uh, more sticks of RAM to get to the number you want, right? But the honest truth is 16 gigs for most of us is enough. 24 pin power connector. This is coming from your PSU. This powers the motherboard where this guy over here, the 8 pin, powers the CPU, okay? What's the limitation here? Well, as you get with the better CPUs, i7s and i9s, uh, this only has a 1 by 8 you might get a little more juice if you had a motherboard that has a 1x8 and a 1x4 or, or two 1x8s. But for the most part, this thing is so limited by other issues that, uh, you know, that's the least of your concerns. Four vertical SATAs here. A lot of times you'll see two vertical, two horizontal, or all four will be horizontal. But uh, that's about standard for this. USB 3.0 header, okay, it says 3.2, but I can't keep up with what gen these are on. So this is going to connect to your front panel of your case, all right? So that's, a, that's good to have that. The one thing that this chipset is missing is the Type-C Charlie. If you have that on your case, this is uh, not going to support that, okay? front panel connectors down here so you can see here is your power switch power LED hard drive and reset and then these guys up here are your speaker all right two USB 2.0's well, let's skip over this we do have these LEDs here nope I never use this stuff Here's your HD audio. That also will come from your case. So PCIe 4.0, this is not, you know, 
going to be a uh, something that's really going to hold you back when PCI 5.0 comes out. Maybe it might matter, you know, someday uh, into the future, but uh, for the most part, you're not going to lose that much performance when we go to PCIe 5 graphics cards. Uh, yeah, the bandwidth is double, but it doesn't really mean that they're going to take advantage of that. Then you have a little uh, one inch. So this is good for a Wi-Fi card or a uh, adding additional USBs. The only negative about this is this guy could be relatively too close to it. If you go with a massive RTX 3080 Ti or 3090, then you're probably going to have not either going to be able to see this or it's going to be right up against the fans. Uh, which can be a negative. Now let's zoom out again. So our CPU fan header is here. Here is one case fan header. Second case fan header down here and that's all you get. All right. So don't expect to put this in a really awesome case uh, unless it has all the fans are supported by Molex this is not that good a case for uh, this is not a good motherboard if you want to have a lot of airflow in your case <laughs> uh, but you know a lot of these a lot of the case fans are dual uh, powered um, you can pick either Molex or the four pin and you're not supposed to do both right you can short something out so Right where the I.O. shield is, here are your audio video connectors. You've got PS2, VGA, DVI Dual, DisplayPort, HDMI. So this has a really good selection uh, with newest stuff that people are using and the older stuff. So that's a positive. Four USB 2.0s, two USB 3.0s, one gig, Ethernet, line out, headphone, microphone. All right, so who is going to buy this? All right, this is, you know, good for that first time builder. Uh, this is not the motherboard meant for somebody that's going to try and set some record benchmarks, right? This is not the motherboard for somebody that thinks they're going to one day upgrade to an i9. This is meant really for locked CPUs, and in my opinion, i5 12600 and less, okay? Not the 12600K. Uh, you want to steer clear of any unlocked CPUs with this, but the i5 12600 would do just fine with this. Um, and really, this are your, you know, this is meant for those guys, in my opinion Celeron, Pentium, i3. Uh, I honestly, with the i5s, I would go with a better motherboard. There's my thoughts on this, folks. $89 may be worth it to some of you. To me, it is not really worth it, all right? Thanks for checking out the video. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you.